This is Twit. Something I'm excited yep. about. Uh, we talked about this last time Alan was on uh, My Digital SSD, a brand nobody's heard of, um, producing SSDs, NVMe SSDs at prices comparable to non-NVMe SSD drives by other manufacturers. We're talking about seriously low prices. Now, Alan can walk us through the performance numbers for my digital SSDs, SBX M.2, NVMe in 128, 256, 512, and one terabyte. He has run the tests. Are you as excited about these drives as you were before you had a chance to test the performance? Yeah, so uh, the thing that excites me about a drive like this is that you don't always need the fire-breathing product, right? right? Like You don't always need the 1080 Ti. You don't always need the 18-core Xeon, right? Well, the SSD equivalent of, it, of that is it'd be nice to have an NVMe SSD. That's a small form factor, but also not have it limited to serial ATA speeds, right? They mm -hmm. do have M.2 that uses serial ATA, uh, as an interface, there are plenty of products out there that are that way. You can get the small form factor, but you're kind of cut off at the knees as you know, you're limited to 500 meg per second, 550 meg per second. Um, right. There's a lot of people that they want more speed, but they don't necessarily need like three and a half gig per second, uh, you know, on the high end, right? And as soon as you make that <laughs> jump, you're pretty much doubling the cost of the SSD, uh, even though it's a smaller part and a much smaller form factor. Uh, you're basically, you're kind of paying for the better performance, right? If you want something like a 960 mm -hmm. Evo or a 960 Pro from Samsung, you're going you're gonna to pay more money. It'd be nice if we can get things a little bit closer to uh, the products that connect via SATA, be it a 2.5 inch or a M.2 part. It'd be nice if we get the price closer to that, but at the same time, still be able to use that NVMe interface, still be able to get slightly better latencies for, for requests. Um, but maybe not the straight line dragster style speed of uh, right. those same parts, right? And the answer to that is to use uh, only two lanes of PCI Express versus four lanes of PCI Express. So oh. that's what's going on here. Uh, these SBX SSDs are using a, a Fizon, I believe it's a Fizon E8 controller that uh, they, they, make it in, they make it both ways. They make it w with a DRAM cache and without in case you wanted to save even more cost, because as we know, DRAM is kind of expensive. Uh, these do come with the uh, DRAM cache on them that caches the translation layer, basically the table where these SSDs need to do their, like, look up where is the data stored within the flash. Uh, so you kind of <laughs> need some, you need, you need some uh, DRAM on an SSD to make sure the performance stays good. So they included that part. They didn't skimp. But the Fizon controller is only two channels of PCI Express. That brings the cost of the controller down. Uh, the performance, obviously, your straight line performance, like your sequential transfers, those are going to be cut in half compared to something with four lanes. You're, you're literally taking, you know, removing two lanes from the interface. So stands to reason, you know, you get half the bandwidth. Um, but again, if you're in a system where you, you know, you're okay with, uh, you know, you're okay with a gig per second or a gig and a half per second, as opposed to something like, you know, three gig per second, then you know, it's still better than the half of a gig per second of serial ATA, right? Um, so if you go to that uh, client QD weighted page of the review, it's probably the easiest uh, just to, to wrap performance up. Um, and you go to that same chart or the first chart there. So there's your there's your 4K random performance. And what you want to focus on is the blue bars. So there's your basically random read performance as you would experience it uh, you know, that this is a weighted result. It takes a bunch of factors into account and tries to get you as close to the actual feel of the SSD uh, with you just sitting in front of the computer. If you're trying to do something with mm -hmm. random reads, booting up a system that has, you know, 3,000 desktop icons and 25 apps uh, loading in the system tray at boot and everything, like you're basically hitting the SSD with a bunch of random performance. Now, those numbers next to the blue bars do not move around very much. Uh, you know, we're, we're in the 17,000 range for these SBX parts. Uh, now, that does mm -hmm. kind of fall off as you go to the, the lower capacities because there's less flash for you to access uh, in parallel. So it kind of loses a little bit of the benefit, you know, and the throughput drops down a little bit because there's just less media to access. Um, but for the most part, you're around 16,000 range uh, for, for performance for these, which is actually very good when you consider that uh, 960 Evo runs in the mm -hmm. 20,000 range. So you're going from the 20,000s down to 16,000s. Yes, you're taking a hit, but it's only like, you know, 15, 20%. It's not 
a huge drop in random performance. Uh, and another thing that's interesting to note there is, uh, look, one up from the bottom there, that's an 860 Evo. That's a serial ATA part. Uh, serial ATA is not really that much slower uh, mm -hmm. than, you know, than the NVMe part on low Q-depth random reads. And that's because the media is still basically the same. It's still NAND flash on the other end of the controller. Uh, and that flash still takes X amount of time to read something. It's just that NVMe shaves a little bit off of the the transfer to the host time. Uh, you know, the, the flash memory access still ends up being roughly the same. Um, all right, so if you go to the sequentials there, which is the next chart, um, you'll notice, yep, yeah, 960 Evo is just going to walk all over stuff, right? So we're doing over 2.2 right. 2, 2 gig per second throughput there. Uh, but when you drop down to these parts, and again, this is a weighted result for sequential. It's not going to give you the maximum possible sequential speed. It's going to give you what the system would probably experience in, in more realistic use. Uh, so that drops down to, you know, like 750 or so meg per second. Uh, but again, serial ATA parts are running at 500. So you're doing, again, you're doing better than serial ATA in both random and sequential performance. Uh, but the key here is that if you go to the last page of the review where we have pricing, is that you're doing it for around 30 cents per gig. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's that's just the going price right now. Like that's literally, you can go to mydigitaldiscount.com and you can buy these parts for those prices. Um, and these guys have a habit of uh, being pretty flexible with the market. Like as the prices of other things change, they have, they have no qualms about dropping their prices mid stride. Uh, these prices mm -hmm. had actually just these prices had actually just dropped to these numbers a few days before this review went live. So I actually had to update my numbers before I posted the review because <laughs> the prices had actually gone down even further, right? Um, right. You know, so decent drives, like five-year warranty. The endurance looks good. The, the price is great. You know, I mean, they're 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 beating Samsung SATA SSD prices even. Uh, so, you know, if you can get an NVMe part, that can beat uh, Samsung SATA SSD price unless you specifically after a SATA SSD for some particular reason. Uh, in my opinion, the M.2 stuff is you know much more convenient, especially if you have any any recent motherboard or motherboard that's come out in the past few years. Chances are there's yeah. an M.2 slot on there. Uh, you know, so if, as long as you're okay with one SSD or uh, just SSDs in the M.2 form factor, this is almost a no-brainer, right? Decent part, performs well, good price, pretty much all you can ask for. Uh, you know, in an SSD, unless you're in some really niche case where you're, you know, you're trying to do really crazy workloads and you want super, super low latency, then I'd say, you know, start <laughs> looking at Optane stuff. But, you know, if you're going to get something with NAND on it, this is decent SSD, good NAND, good numbers, you know, it's, a, it's worth it. So this is the kind of thing where I would, like default recommendation for some random buddy asks you which SSD you should buy. Right, I would probably point to these right now because that's gonna, uh, you know, he's not gonna have to go to the bank at second mortgage's house to afford <laughs> yeah. a decent capacity. Just needs to do that for his GPU. And, and you know, if you're yeah. not if you're not a video editor or working with like two terabyte SQL files or some of the more you know out of control uh, data moving situations. Right, and even if you are cool. and you just want your boot drive to be separate, because a lot of right. people that are kind of power users that do a lot of that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. might also tend to be purists in that they're going to have the the drive the right drive for the right duty right so if you want right. if you wanted to have you know uh 480 gig uh 900p optane ssd to beat the tar out of but have it as a secondary drive because you don't want to try to squeeze your os your games and everything else on it it'd be good to use this as your primary drive and then beat the heck out of the other one or vice versa right you're looking for a big steam game drive uh, you already mm -hmm. have something like a 900p that you're booting from, but you don't want to buy another 900p just for Steam games. And if anything, they don't even make them more than 480 gig. So if you're looking right. for a good one terabyte Steam game drive and you have an M.2 slot to use, by all means, I mean, that's, you know, 300 bucks for one terabyte. Uh, that's not even a sale. That's just their price. Um, there you, you know, have it. Can't go wrong there either. Yeah.